morning. Good morning, Sierra. Blessed feast to all of you, beloved in Christ. To you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the clergy celebrating with me today, I appreciate their ministry. I pray for them to stay strong, to stay, to stay full of energy, serving the holy community, for the holy communities everywhere. Beloved in Christ, I greet all of you as usual. You are so dear to me. I haven't seen you for some long time. But we never depart from each other because we are in a prayer for each other always. Today, while I am coming here, I looked at their construction and I give thanks to God for what you're doing here. Establishing an academy is a great vision, a great vision, because through this academy you will save and transform many, many souls. Before I go ahead with my remarks today, I have to tell you why I am in love with education and knowledge. Because we cannot, in the Orthodox Church, we cannot worship God blindly. Some people think that if they were born in the faith, that is enough. It's a blessing, but it's not enough. Some other people, if they think that they convert to orthodoxy at a certain time, that would be enough. It's a great blessing, but it's not enough. So we have to work hard, beloved in Christ. We have to bring, we have to read, to read books. We have to listen to, el to the elders. We have to, to, to be obedient to the church and to the uh, Holy Gospel. Every word we read in the Holy Gospel could be a reason for our salvation. One word can make a big difference in our life. And listen to this short story. The highest police commissioner of New York City called me one day, the one who retired. The current one is my friend as well. But the one who retired, before his retirement, he said, your eminence, I need your help. I said, what? You need my help? And that is the phone, on the phone. So I couldn't see like his face, the reaction on his face. Yeah, I need your help, your eminence. I said, but how can I help you? He said, I know, I know we have helicopters, we have guns, we have, you know, like machines, we have uh, police, uh, we have a big budget, we have this and we have this, and he went on and on and on. But I need, I still, I need your help. I said, what kind of help? He said to me, you can transform the mind. We can kill people, we can arrest people, we can put them in jail, we can harm, cause harm and whatever, but you have more authority over the human being than us. Imagine these words are big. He said, you have control over the mind. 
through what? Like Father Josiah, for example, what authority he has over you? Just love, and he cares for you, and he cares like for your, for your growth in, 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 in the faith, and that's it. This is his authority over you. And I have the same. I have the same. Like even some, some places, they offend us. We don't have to, to respond. All what we can say, God forgive you, God bless you, and we smile, and that's it. Our authority, beloved in Christ, is the authority of love and forgiveness. Our authority is not to hurt people, not to offend people. Even they offend us in many, many ways. That is their problem. So, beloved in Christ, we need this academy desperately because we believe, we strongly believe that this academy and through this academy, we can transform people. Imagine the University of Belamand in Lebanon, and I am on the board of trustees of that university. When our late patriarch Ignatius IV built and established and founded that university, one of many, many departments, many, many of schools, you know, like one of many schools in that university is the studies, Islamic studies in an Orthodox university. What to do with that? Many, many criticisms we, we received at that time. You know, now we, we, we think that some people, because they don't know anything about their faith, about their religion, so that's why they use violence. But we think differently. Through the University of Alamand, through this department of Islamic studies, we bring enlightenment to many, many people. And we transform them from the possibility of becoming like violent into positive people. So any kind of, any kind of uh, knowledge, any kind of education can heal people as well. In one, my, in one of my visits, many visits to the State Department, and while I was once upon a time talking to the Secretary of State, not this one, the one before, so I said to him, Mr. Secretary, if you like to heal this life from violence, you have to focus on education, and we can work together. And he agreed with me. You know, like if you, if you look into Pakistan, for example, or Afghanistan, or what's going on in Palestine, for example, you will see, you will see that lack of knowledge is the main problem there. They follow blindly. They claim that they are religious people blindly. I said, look, in Afghanistan and Pakistan, how many schools of, you know, like they are teaching the wrong teaching. So that's why those in those countries, especially in Pakistan, they, you hear about it, they kill Christians all the time. They persecute them. Why? Because their religion is telling them to do that. And they are ignorant of their own religion. They don't know it. They read one word, for example, out of context. They read it and they follow that blindly. So we don't do that. 
You know, I appreciate your being here today. It's Monday, but it's a great feast of the Holy Dormition and the translation of the Mother of God into heaven. This is a special day. It's a working day, but it is a special day in our life. We cannot ignore that. We appreciate your participation. We appreciate your being here. This prayer is, is like for the healing of the soul and of the body, for the healing of, of the priesthood, for the healing of the episcopacy, for the healing of the entire life. So even if you were not here for some reason, even like two people are praying with me, still like important. But we appreciate your being here today. You made every effort to be here. God bless your effort. Beloved in Christ, the Holy Dormition is not a little thing in our life. It's not magic. It's not a myth. It's not mythical. It is a real, look, the beer. We use the same beer for, for the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. We call it the epitaphios, the burial. So we do the same here. If you go into the stages of our, uh, the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, you see like the same, we are doing the same for the mother of God. So that's why it, it takes its significance from this. Today in the Senexarion, while they are reading the Senexarion, the Senexarion means the story of the feast. We heard that the Archangel Michael or Gabriel appeared to the mother of God and told her that in three days, after three days, she will pass. She will depart. And she departed. This is not a shame, someone like to depart. But her departure was not like ours. No pain, no any physical ailment, no illness, no suffering, nothing at all. This is a transition of our life from death to life. You will go through that. I will go through that. And I hope it will be similar to her. So this is a fact in our life, beloved in Christ. Don't fear death when it comes. Because through death, we will be a new people. Above sin, above weakness, above illness, above anything like that. All what we are experiencing these days, coronavirus and other things, because we are still in this life. This life is offering what it has. But God has for us something better and different. Beloved in Christ, after she departed, she always sustained the apostles. She was with them like their mother. She cared for them. You know, like when Peter denied him three times, when Thomas said, I cannot believe unless I put my finger in his side, and others, you know, like said something different, she brought them back to the mainstream. And I will tell you what I said yesterday in the cathedral when I ordained someone a deacon to the holy priesthood like today. I said the biggest and the most profound, the most profound image of the priesthood 
you will be surprised, is the mother of God. And I'm not talking as like as about her as a female. I'm talking about her virtuous life. Could be the answer for me, for the newly the candidate, like about to, to be ordained. Could be like an example for each one of us, married or single, ordained or non-ordained. Like if we look at, into her life, why this feast is so great, profound, important. Because a human being has become, in her, through her, human being has become the real icon of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not a little thing. You know, like what we say about our Lord, that is the most natural thing. Because he is the creator. He is the savior. He is the alpha and, and omega. He is everything. The fullness. But a human being like her. And everything has happened through her. The way it happened. That is a great miracle. This is an affirmation. That could be you. Could be you. Could be any one of people of the, in this church. She brought all the apostles together at once to tell them one line message because she was not like a, a person of much wording, much talk. One, one sentence is the message and I will share it with you. Thomas was not there. Again, the same story with Thomas. Thomas was not there. Three days later, he came. He wanted to see what's in the coffin, what's in the... He didn't find the body because the feast of today is the dormition and the translation from death to life. From the limitation from a limit life into the fullness, into the, the full theology, if you like. And she was the first one who was in paradise. So, beloved in Christ, her virtuous life is not a little thing. And the message she left for them. Listen, she said to them, in mind, of course, because they heard it during their life with her. They heard it like many times. Stay strong, I'll be with you always. So that's why she is with us the same way. She is intercede, she, she, she intercedes for us daily the holy paraclesis you did here that is a supplication supplicatory prayer beloved in Christ we are not worshipping an idol we are not worshipping her but we appreciate and we revere her in our life she 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 is the greatest lesson, if you like, through her virtues. And we got to know like Jesus more and more. And those who do not believe in her, they miss the point. They don't receive anything from anyone. A human being has been transformed and she is telling us the message. That is the most truth, the most real of our reality of our life. So what I said yesterday in the cathedral about the priesthood, and I want Deacon Jason, where, where are you Deacon Jason? Come here next to me.
this man, when I ordained him like two years, one year so far, one year. He came here, beloved in Christ, to give the whole being of him to this ministry. So I say to you, before the ordination, if like to look for any virtue in this life, always look at our master on one hand and on the mother of God on the other hand. You find there on her, in her, you find all what you makes you successful in this life as a priest. We have many books, St. John Chrysostom, St. Paul, St. Uh, this, uh, St. that. But the best example for the priesthood is here. She was, like when we say, like someone, a big mouth. She was a very quiet and still person. Because she was in a prayer at all times. You know, the community, this community, talking about the community today, you don't need my words. You don't need my words. You look at me, and you look at my life. If I am, I could be like a good example for you, you emulate. The priest, the same. You know, one day, a priest came to me, and all his cassock, you know, like, is dirty and there are holes. Why? Because he was a smoker. How could it be possible, like someone, after he promised God, like, to be a smoker? You know, like, the priesthood is about sacrifice, like, to sacrifice our life for the faith, for the people. So when he cannot sacrifice a cigarette, what's the point of his priesthood? So beloved in Christ, the priesthood is very needed in the church in the 21st century. The holy priesthood is the answer for many, many questions. So that's why in the beginning of September, this coming September, next month, the beginning of the ecclesiastical year, after we did many interviews with all the seminarians, and you will see, you will read, and you will watch that beginning of September in many ways. So we are publishing all these interviews to encourage young people, to encourage human beings to become and commit themselves to the holy priesthood. We need vocations. We have everything. We have everything in our life, good and bad. But we need a holy priesthood to make a big difference in our life. You know, when he gives you communion, he is not Jason anymore. He is not the one you know anymore. And yesterday I said, the priesthood is not, you know, like something, it is royal. No question about that. It is royal because it comes from heaven comes from our master but still as human beings we are under many many weaknesses so the priest has to be crucified every single moment and he has to accept it Don't ever rejoice because when you hear praises. 
that will make you feel good about yourself for a second or two seconds. But listen to the criticisms and try to improve every single day. And you, you don't have to react. You don't have to offend people because of that. Accept it. Accept it. Mary, today we heard in the, the end, the last part of the reading, the gospel reading, that Mary, sister of Lazarus, was listening to Jesus carefully and what she listened from him, he will never ever be taken from her anymore. She chose the good portion. Every day feel yourself at the feet of your master. Every day. After you finish your ministry, after you finish your work, and when you are in quiet at home or in the church, just try to remember your iniquities, weaknesses, limitations, and try to get the strength from him and say, Lord, have mercy on me. This kind of priesthood, beloved in Christ, makes a big difference in the 21st century. And that's why we need this kind of quality. We need all of you, young people. You know, priesthood, episcopacy, coming from good families like you. If you don't offer anyone to the church, try to offer. We need every single young person in this holy community to be ordained. Am I asking something crazy? Am I asking something impossible? Am I asking for something like we don't need? So I leave you here. God bless you. And when in a few minutes after the great procession, when I ordain, when I will ordain Jason and I present him to you, I ordain him, I pray for his ordination, for his priesthood, but the confirmation comes from you. When you say he is worthy, axios and mustahab, the confirmation comes from you because your being here is extremely, extremely important. Please pray for me. God bless you.